All right, this is really exciting because we are currently in transit to my favorite hidden gem for expeditionary sea kayaking off the coast of Maine. It's an archipelago of beautiful islands, well protected from the harsh Atlantic Ocean, with insane access free to the public so you and I can go have a grand old time on an ocean expedition. And we have a very special goal with this expedition. Out past this archipelago, there's a specific island way out in the open Atlantic, where one of my bucket list animals roost for a few months throughout the year. I think of them as half duck, half penguin, and 100% adorable. The Atlantic puffin makes an annual migration to Seal Island, which is about nine miles out past the last major landmass, which makes for a challenging adventure for a solo paddler like me. All right, let's take a look at the map and make sure we know exactly where we're going. So here's Stonington. What we're trying to do is see if we can find a place out on harbor tonight. That's the goal. So we have a good stretch to cover. So apart from being a massive recreation hub, it's also very much a working harbor out of Stonington. And actually, you might be able to hear in the background, but there's a functioning granite quarry on an island out here called Crotch Island. Even with the seas calm like this, navigation can be tricky because all of the islands blend in with one another on the horizon, making it tricky to know where you are and what heading you should be on. All right, let's go see what we have for a campsite. View check. Oh boy. All right, time to make base camp. Oh, moment of truth. Look at what we're dealing with. So I'm thinking that because we've already found and made camp without much of a problem, and we have a good several hours of daylight, let's put that to use and field stress test all of my equipment and my systems and my skills. I want to go out and practice some aggressive self-rescue techniques. That way tomorrow during the big paddle, I at least have confidence knowing that my equipment, my systems, mind, body, and soul are all working as they should. Yeah. When you look out into the Atlantic Ocean from the Northeast coast on a hot summer day like this, it's hard to conceptualize the real lethal nature of the ocean. Powerful offshore winds, strong tidal currents, and sudden fog can all team up to turn this dreamscape into a nightmare. Any of those factors could get you lost, alone, and even worse, swimming in the freezing water. Having confidence interpreting weather reports and complex tide charts, knowing how to chart routes that incorporates this information, along with knowing how to use a marine VHF radio and emergency GPS communications are a few of the intellectual skills needed on top of a physical skill set that includes a variety of self-rescue techniques like a kayak roll and other re-entry techniques that get you out of the water fast. Without a cohesive marriage of all of these skills, it's just not responsible to go on a trip like this in these waters.
So I'm actually pretty happy with how that went. I still have a pretty solid sea kayak roll, although it was in perfect conditions. Um, and I'm still athletic enough to cowboy up and into my kayak should I need to wet exit for some very unfortunate reason. So I think what we need to do now is get nice and cozy. Let's get ready for an early dinner. And if we're lucky, we just might catch a decent sunset. You know, they say the most common injury in the backcountry is burning yourself with water. Happy to say I have not yet joined that statistic. We have some wild raspberries. Very sweet. That was something else. It's a little after 5 a.m. and the sunrise is spectacular. Calm as glass. Can't say I got a lot of sleep though. Hammock is comfortable, but the mosquitoes, they're just loud. I'm gonna slam this cup of coffee. We're gonna load the boat with only the essentials that we need for today. And we're gonna leave everything we don't here at camp. I think we should be pushing off in about 20 minutes, half an hour. See you on the water. It is glass out. Wow. We're live. We are ready to roll. So we're gonna start moving, we're gonna make some time. We're gonna go straight to Idaho, the northern end of it. That's gonna give us a couple miles of paddling. It's gonna let me know how I feel. So by the time we get the southern tip of Idaho, I will be able to see straight out to the crossing to Seal Island. Okay, let's go. The route down along the western coast of Isla Ho goes through productive working waters, and the island coastlines have year-round residences and communities. The calm waters and beautiful weather make my odds of safely and successfully paddling the nearly 10-mile open crossing to Seal Island and fulfilling my dream of seeing puffins up close and personal seem like it just might be a reality today. Okie dokie, we are pulling up to the southernmost tip of Idaho. 
and I'm gonna pull in right here. We can get a little elevated and I wanna get some big views out into the open Atlantic. It is decision time. I've paddled about eight and a half miles so far. That took me two hours. It's only 8.30 in the morning and it's another eight and a half miles straight out into the open ocean to get to Seal Island. So eight and a half there, eight and a half back, eight and a half back to camp. I can put it like this. I'm 25% done with my daily route. The conditions are still looking insanely good. At this point, I'm not worried about the external conditions. It's more the internal. The only factors now are if somehow I obtain some sort of injury and I'm unable to propel myself back. I think with everything still in my favor, I'm just gonna take it mile by mile. I'm gonna put my wetsuit on now. We dress for the swim, not the paddle. So let's saddle up. I've got 16 mile round trip before I get back to mainland right here because we can't get off at the island. Apparently, that's because there's unexploded ordnance. The Navy used to use it as a bomb range. As soon as any of my factors start to dissolve, if visibility goes away, if fog rolls in, I'm turning around. Okay, so it's pretty surreal how calm and quiet it is. I'm also about to pass the last of the lobster buoys. I'll show you here. Seal Island is starting to render in from the simulation. I bet I can uh, crop zoom for you to see it before I, probably not, but now I bet you can. We are out here, man. Okay, so, yeah. maybe a little perspective for you, maybe not. We have gone 5.34 miles, well over halfway on that. But it's just like a big lake. Oh my god, it puffed it. saw my first puffin. Wow, that just put some wind in my sails. So we're still a mile, mile and a half from Seal Island, and I already saw my first puffin. We are closing in. I can smell the bird poop from here.
<laughs> okay, holy crap. What a success. We gotta start making some time. We gotta turn around. Whoa! There she is. Woo! Base camp. It is 6 p.m. We launched at 6 a.m. That is 12 straight hours paddling in my boat. 30 something miles. It's definitely the biggest paddle I've ever had. 33 miles, 12 hours in my boat. An ambitious goal executed, and the icing on the cake is we got some shots of some puffins. There's a major bucket list item checked off the list. I am cooked. I don't know if you can tell. My face is burnt, and I am exhausted. Jeez. Oh, what a fabulous day, though. <laughs> <laughs> 